Hi everybody, happy Pride. My name is Danny Marie, and I'm here today on behalf of Walgreens to show you Color Correcting 101 for trans women. Let's get started. So just a little bit of backstory on me. I am transgender. I am approaching my eighth year on hormones and it's just it's been a whirlwind of different experiences but it has really made me more secure with myself um, it has made me a stronger individual and a part of any trans girl's journey is making sure that your makeup products are on point and getting your base right so that's what we're gonna do today I am going to give you guys a mini tutorial on how to color correct in case you have any kind of like five o'clock shadow happening on the face and this is applicable for any kind of color correcting situation in which you want to cancel any kind of bluish or grayish tones in the skin, you can still follow these same steps. It works really, really great for under eye color correcting as well. So let's get started. The first step that you want to do in this multi-step process is use a good primer. So I have the Airbrush Away Primer from number seven. This is one of my favorite primers in the drugstore and partly because it has a lot of skin smoothing properties to it. So there is a product I believe called Dimethicone in this primer and that is supposed to give your skin a more filtered, more smooth effect. Now the reason why this is really necessary for girls like me out there is because when you are starting your journey, you probably have a lot of texture on your skin due to stubble, due to shaving. Um, I mean, even to this day, I still have a little bit of texture on my skin that I like to correct with a primer. This is like that little extra security blanket underneath the foundation and all the color correcting that we're gonna do. So I'm just gonna smooth this over my face and I'm basically putting this anywhere the makeup touches, forehead, under my eyes, especially because I have fine lines under there. I even like to put some on the lids and don't forget your neck. And I mean, you can wear this primer just on bare skin. You don't even have to put makeup over top of it and it really does a good job of minimizing texture on the skin. So the next product that I'm gonna go into is actually the color corrector. Uh, now when I say color corrector, I mean a heavily pigmented kind of concealer product that is meant to cancel out bluish or grayish undertones in the skin. All of this goes back to color theory and the color wheel. So when you look at the color wheel, when you see blue, on the color wheel, the opposite end of that is orange. And when you mix the two together, they neutralize each other. And what you get is a more kind of just even skin tone. So that is really a quick run through of the, of the thought behind color correcting concealers, uh, color correction products when it comes to makeup. And that's really what it's meant to do. It's meant to just cancel out any of those undertones. Now there's some in different uh, colors. There's green color correctors, which are meant to cancel out any reddish tones in the skin. So there's a plethora of different types of color correctors. And what I'm going to use today is a custom mix that I came up with for my own skin tone. But you can use a myriad of different products in the drugstore. There's ones from Maybelline, they even have like a color correction little cream concealer palette that you can use. If you don't have any of these products, that's totally fine too. A really good trick, an old school trick, is just to use a lipstick that has kind of an orangey, corally pigment to it. You could even use liquid lipstick. Just make sure that it has some amount of pigmentation to it because without the pigmentation, it's not gonna cancel out those undertones um, in the beard area, and you will have a harder time really masking that. Another thing I wanna to mention too is for my trans women of color out there, you want to use things that are going to be more heavily saturated in tone. You're gonna to wanna to use 
deeper oranges, deeper rust tones. You may even want to use something that has a little bit of red in it. It really depends upon your undertone and, you know, whether you lean more cool or whether you lean more warm. Whether there is a little bit more red in your skin or whether you have more of those golden-y, olive-y undertones in your skin. And that really just comes with playing around with products and playing around with um, different undertones of foundation. So with all of that said, I'm just going to get into color correcting. I like to use a brush first and then I will go in later with a sponge and really blend that in and merge that with the skin. But right now I'm just placing the product and you're going to look a little funny at first, I will admit. It's going to look ridiculous. But once you put the foundation and the concealer and the powder over top of this, it's going to look perfected, it's going to look really natural, and you're not going to see any of that 5 o'clock shadow. So naturally you're going to put this in places where that 5 o'clock shadow is. And for me, I've had a lot of laser hair removal, a lot of electrolysis, a lot of facial hair removal during my journey. So I don't really need this stuff as much. So this is more just kind of like a tutorial for my girls starting out. And the really cool thing about Walgreens is that you can go into virtually any Walgreens location. You can ask for this advice with any beauty consultant and they are more than happy to help. And a lot of them have specific training on this particular type of makeup. So, you know, at Walgreens, we like to be fully inclusive and live and celebrate all of the varying types of humanity, if you will. Oh, and like I said, you can use this trick under your eyes too, if you have any like shadow underneath the eyes. So I just have like a little bit like right here. So I'm gonna put that color corrector right here and now we will go into our sponge and just bounce that product into the skin for this particular type of tutorial if you start to look like an oompa loompa during the process you know you're on the right track kind of just like made one half of my face completely orange. It's cool. We're gonna roll with it. Trust the process, it will look good in the end. So now that we have that kind of like fully melded into the skin, I'm just gonna go in with a loose translucent setting powder. This one is from Honest, and this is the Invisible Blurring Loose Powder. And what I like to do here is just use the other end of that sponge, and I'm gonna dip it into the powder. And now we're just gonna set this very lightly, and I'll tell you why in just a minute. So we are setting the color corrector in place because you want that pigment to not blend in with your foundation when you're ready to put that on. You want it to fully stay in place so that that orangey kind of corally tone just stays true underneath of the foundation and does a really great job of canceling out any of those blue tones. Next up, we're gonna go in with our foundation. I am using one of my favorites. This is the Infallible Pro Glow in the shade 202. And I like the Pro Glow because it's more on the radiant side, so it tends to look like skin once it fully sets, which helps the makeup look super natural. And I'm just gonna use that same sponge to apply it. And also having a more radiant kind of texture in your foundation is gonna make it look not cakey. The key here is to work and kind of sheer layers and build up the color where you need it. And that is really gonna help it look its most natural. And as you can see, all of that oranginess is starting to disappear. Bye, Felicia. 
And also because we color corrected under our eyes, we probably don't even need a concealer. But that's really a case by case scenario. So if you need concealer after this, feel free to do so. And I even take that foundation and I put it on my chest because I want to make sure that this looks as natural as it possibly can. And really carrying that foundation down your neck and even applying it on your chest is gonna help you with that. Okay, this is looking good. Okay, so the next step in this multi-step tutorial is to apply concealer. Now I am using the Infallible Full Wear Concealer by L'Oreal. This is one of my tried and true concealers and it is full full coverage and you only need a tiny tiny bit of this and I like to use this concealer in multiple ways. I sculpt my face with it. I use it for like eyeshadow primer. It's just a really great all-around concealer. You have to work really really fast with this concealer too. It sets pretty quick, <laughs> but the coverage is everything. Since we put in a lot of work perfecting our base, you wanna go back into your old friend right here, which is that Honest Beauty setting powder. That way all of those products are locked in all day. The final step is optional that you can totally do this if you like more of the dewy look and that is just setting everything with a setting spray. So I'm going to be using the Photo Focus Coconut 3-in-1 Primer Water. And what I like about this trick is it really does a great job of melding all of those layers together and it also reduces more of the matte powdery look on the skin. So what you end up with is more of a natural finish. All right, and there you have it. Color correcting for trans women. Okay. You now have your perfected base laid down and fully set, and you can build upon this and basically do whatever look that you want to. Go out there and slay pride this year, y'all. And finally, I wanted to end the video on one final note and this is kind of spurred by all of the recent happenings in our country um, which stemmed from the death of George Floyd. Our modern gay rights movement, the LGBTQ rights movement, would not have been possible um, if it weren't for the actions of trans women of color. Women like Marsha P. Johnson, Sylvia Rivera, trans women of color threw the first stones at Stonewall Inn in Greenwich Village in June of 1969. That whole event catapulted the LGBTQ rights movement that we now have today. Coming out of this video, I just want you to know that pride isn't just a parade. It isn't just a movement for gay people. It's a movement for non-binary people. It's a movement for trans people, for trans women, for trans men. And that really is what the rainbow flag is all about, the human experience. The first pride was not a parade. The first pride was a social revolution, was a riot, was acting out against the police, coming into bars and raiding bars and arresting LGBTQ people, arresting trans women arresting gay men and women. It was an act of revolution. And I feel like we're seeing that in our current day and age happen again. And so I want, I want you guys to know that pride that we all experience now, the fun, the parades, the drag queens, the shows, LGBTQ culture, all of this would not be possible if it weren't for the tenacious actions of trans women of color. So when you're out there celebrating Pride this year, if you go out or if you choose to stay home, whatever you choose to do, because I know we're dealing with a lot right now because of COVID, just know that it isn't just for one particular letter in that acronym. 
It is for us all, and it wouldn't be possible if it weren't for women of color, trans women of color. And I think with all of that said, I'm going to go. Thank you so much for having me. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you found it useful and helpful. Thank you so much, Walgreens, for having me on here. And look out for more content from me. Bye! Happy Pride!